pushfully toward Baghdad. President Obama says he won't send American troops back into Iraq, but how deeply could the United States get involved? Joining us now, Sebastian Younger, he's a journalist and filmmaker. His new documentary is entitled Corn Doll. Uh, also joining us, Tara Maller of the New America Foundation and CNN political commentator Raihan Salam. He's a contributing editor at the National Review. Uh, Sebastian, uh, what should the U.S. be doing right now, if anything, in Iraq? Uh, well, that's a complicated question. I, I, I've never covered Iraq, um, but I think a, a unit like the 173rd Airborne, the guys that I was with in Afghanistan, are probably pretty well suited to dropping in there and uh, at least carving out a safe area around the embassy. But, you know, that's, I think it really depends on what the uh, Iraqi security forces do. Terry, you've studied uh, Iraq for a long time. What is Nouri al-Maliki going to do? Because the president basically lectured him today, you've got to take steps before the U.S gets involved militarily. Well, I was listening a little bit earlier, and based on what the ambassador from Iraq was saying, it doesn't look right now like Maliki is jumping into action based on President Obama's remarks. I mean, I think we're going to need to watch over the couple of days. I think the administration is going to have to watch the displacement that's happening, the desertions that are happening, the deaths that are happening, and the divisions, the sectarian divisions. This is all deja vu. We saw this all in 2004, 2005, 2006. And it's quite disheartening that it's what we're seeing again now. And unless Maliki starts moving, I mean, I don't know. I don't know that he's going to move as quickly as Obama would like for the U.S. to lend him some help. Ryan, what do you think? Uh, what do you think Maliki is going to do? Because certainly the president put, put all the pressure on him to to do the right thing. Well, the trouble is, uh, you know, what is the right thing? And I think the fundamentally right thing for him to do is to embrace power sharing. When you see the conflict in Iraq, it's been a communal conflict, not unlike the conflict we saw in Bosnia in the mid-1990s, in which everyone fears minority status. They fear that minority status is essentially a death sentence. And that's why you have the Sunni population was somewhat restrained when they saw that American power was restraining Maliki's hand. And then when you had a diminished and then ultimately uh, no U.S. military presence, there was no force to restrain Maliki, and so there was this deep anxiety. Arwa mentioned in her report that you, know, you have plenty of Sunnis who are not embracing the ideology of ISIS, and yet it's that fear of being a vulnerable minority that is fueling the desertions and is fueling this larger chaos. So that's ultimately what Maliki has to do. He needs to move towards power sharing and a genuine, authentic, inclusive political settlement. And that's going to be very hard for someone who has a very little reputation uh, as an inclusive figure. All right, I want everyone to stand by. We're just starting this conversation. We'll take a quick.